Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Hoare and I am the Business Economics and Government Information Librarian here at UK. And what that means is I support the Gatton School of Business, the Martin School of Public Policy, and the Patterson School of Diplomacy. Um, but I also serve as the library's um, kind of forward-facing person on government information. And um, so that's, that is part of the reason why I am um, doing this presentation today on finding laws, legislation, and regulation. Um, I also have a lot of professional experience with this. Before I became an academic librarian, um, I spent about 20 years um, doing public policy research and legislative affairs, um, both here in Lexington and in Washington, DC. Um, I worked for membership associations that represented uh, state and local officials, um, including the Council of State Governments, the National Conference of State Legislatures, and the International Association of Chiefs of Police. And in all of those jobs, I spent way too much time of my life uh, looking for federal and state bills and laws and regulations. Um, on very many occasions, I've done uh, research to figure out uh, what, what laws all 50 states have on a specific topic. Um, I have been on probably, I have definitely been on all 50 state legislative websites and know the good ones from the bad ones. And um, hopefully I can share some of that knowledge with you today. Um, doing legislative or when I say legal research, I mean more about finding laws and less about, um, you know, like legal defense or, <laughs> or work like that. But um, it can be a lot more difficult than you expect, especially since all of the information is publicly available. Um, I am going to be using all freely available websites today. I'm not going to be using any of the library's subscription databases. Um, that's not to say that we don't have subscription databases that you could use for this type of research, um, but I wanted to highlight the ones that are freely available to everyone. And doing this research can be hard if you don't have key information like the bill number, for example. Um, if you have the bill number, this gets a lot easier. Um, but in most cases, you won't have the bill number. You'll hear about a topic um, in a news story, or you know that um, the legislature is considering a bill that would do something you're interested in, but you don't have the bill number, and you're going to need to try to figure out how to find the bill without that information. And I'm going to talk about several different strategies you can use to do that. Um, but the most important one I want that I think you need to think about when you're doing legislative research is to think about who are the stakeholders, like who cares the most about this bill or this regulation. And when you identify who is impacted and who is likely to care, you can often find more information about the bill um, that gives you more context and lets you know um, in plain English what the bill will do. And as you'll see, as I get started going through this, you'll see that I, um, you start acting like a detective through most of this. Um, and so some of you might be too young to remember, but um, Schoolhouse Rock, I'm Just a Bill, uh, describes how a bill becomes a law. And here's a brief snippet of it. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I got as far as Capitol Hill. Well, now I'm stuck in committee and I'll sit here and wait while a few key congressmen discuss and debate whether they should let me be. Oh, how I hope and pray that they will. But today I am. Um, so. Uh, this, um, so this bill, so this Schoolhouse Rock um, video talks about how a bill becomes a law in the traditional way. Um, you know, in, in the way you learn about it in school, a bill is introduced by either a representative or a senator. It's referred to a committee where they might have a hearing and hear from witnesses, and then they'll take a vote on whether or not to send it to the floor of the, of the chamber. Then the bill will go to the floor for a debate um, and a vote. And if it's passed, it then goes to the other chamber where it is then referred to a committee for a hearing and a vote. 
brought to that floor. And then if it is passed by the second chamber, it's sent to the president for a signature. Um, the president can either sign or veto the bill. Um, and if it's vetoed, then Congress has the opportunity to override that veto. In reality, <laughs> this is not really how most bills are passed. Uh, what is still true is that a bill must be passed by the House and Senate in identical form with identical language and then signed by the president or Congress overrides the veto. But this traditional process is way less common. And now so much of our uh, laws are passed in these giant omnibus bills with hundreds of pages of, pages of provisions that things are thrown into at the last minute. Um, there aren't any hearings. It's hard to know what's in the bill. Um, and so following the traditional process where it's easy to track a bill as it goes through step by step is getting harder and harder. And so if you're researching federal legislation, uh, congress.gov is the official website for federal legislation. And it contains the, the text of all the bills and resolutions, uh, activity in Congress. It includes things like committee reports, the, all the vote counts, and links to the congressional record. And um, I think that I might have screwed up my... <laughs> Um, I know, okay, thought I screwed up my, um, my screen sharing, sorry, but, um, for, but when you're searching in congress.gov, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and show you how to do that, there's just a couple things you need to know before you get started. Um, the first thing is you need to know what session of Congress you're interested in. And so a session of Congress is two years long. It roughly matches the election cycle for the two year terms in the House of Representatives. And so this current Congress, which is the 117th Congress, started in January of 2021 and will run to January of 2023. And conversely, the one prior to this started in January 2019 and ended in January 2021. All bills that are not passed at the end of the session, they die. They have to be reintroduced in the next session. And the bill numbers <laughs> restart. So something that is, you know, a bill HR 100 in the 116th Congress, um, HR 100 might be something different in the next Congress. Um, so it's really important to know if you want to search, like especially right now in the beginning of a new session, do you want to? Are you searching like for 2021, or do you really want to look at what something that passed la or was voted on last year? And so when you're getting ready to search on congress.gov, you um, need to kind of take stock of what kind of information you already have. Uh, the gold standard is a bill number. If you have a bill number, this is super easy. And you can identify a bill number um, in the House, they're HR. So a bill would be like HR 100. And in the Senate, it's just S, so like S20. Um, if you don't have a bill number, if you have the bill title, the official bill title, that can also get you pretty easily to um, the legislation you want. Um, sometimes you know, you don't know the title, you don't know the bill number, but you know who the legislator is that's sponsoring it. Um, that can help. And you can definitely do keyword searches, um, but it's a, little, it's a little harder and you might have to sort through a lot of bills to find the one you're looking for. And again, you also want to make sure you know the date that this was considered, mostly to make sure you're looking in the right session of Congress. Because if you're looking for something that was signed into law into early January, that would actually be in last the last session. Um, so I am going to uh, switch over to show you some live searches on congress.gov. Um, and so just a couple different examples depending on the type of information you might have. Um, you might be interested in learning more about the voting rights bill that was passed by the House and is kind of stalled in the Senate as they figure out whether or not they have enough votes to move forward on it. And in this case, you happen to know that it's called HR1 because that's how it's mentioned in the news because it was kind of the priority bill um, for the House Democrats. And so you literally can type in <laughs> HR1 here at the top. 
Um, you can also see right here, it's also listed under the most viewed bills. Um, and so sometimes if it's a bill that is in the news right now, you might be able to find it right here in that section. And you can see that Jennifer, it's, yes. We're just seeing your PowerPoint. Oh no, okay, let me, let me, thank you. Let me, I thought okay. I'd screw that up. Let me stop share and I'll share again. Okay. Because I think I didn't share everything. Let's, I'm gonna do it one more time. Okay, can you see congress.gov now? Yes. Okay, all right, I apologize for that. I will show you again what I was talking about. I typed in HR1 into this key, into the keyword search, and you can see um, underneath it that these are the most viewed bills that I was talking about um, where HR1 is listed. But also you can see that when I typed in the bill number, you can see that it's asking, um, you know, did I want to search in all sources? Um, or just in legislation. Um, and so legislation will get you like directly to the bill faster um, and all sources will include some other things like links in the congressional record. Um, but we're just gonna, we're gonna search in legislation. And if you notice, oh, I should have mentioned, I'm gonna go back just to show you. It defaults, um, it defaults to current Congress. So this means that this is the 117th Congress that started in January. If you really mean to search the previous Congress, you need to change this to all Congresses. So, um, but just know that it defaults that way. So we're gonna, um, so I searched for HR1 and you can see it brought me directly to it because like I said, having the bill number makes this super, super easy. And you can see they're telling you that this is a bill <laughs> and it gives you some information. Here's the title, which is for the People Act of 2021. You can see sponsors. These are the main people who, the, this is the legislator who introduced the bill. Also that it has 222 co-sponsors, which is a lot. That's probably all of the Democrats. Um, and you can see it's telling you that it, the last thing that happened is that it has passed the House and that it has been sent to the Senate. So on March 11th, it was received in the Senate and you can click here to see the list of kind of all the actions that have happened. And it can just show you that all these things happened, all these amendments and other things. Usually you don't need to know that level of detail. You just want to know where it is in the process. And so this little tracker thing is a really easy um, way to see that. And when you click on the bill, um, you get the same type of overview that we saw before, but then you see these tabs. And so really useful is the summary. And this is what I call a plain English summary. It tells you exactly what is in the bill. Um, this is a very huge bill. So this is a very simplified summary, but, but I just want you to see that there, it says there are two summaries. And one is a summary of when the bill was introduced and one is when it passed the house. And there are two summaries because that means that the bill was changed between when it was introduced and when it was passed. So there were some amendments. Um, so if you're ever looking at a summary, you really wanna make sure you're looking at a summary of the current version of the bill and not something that no longer applies because the bill has been changed. Um, and there's lots of tabs up here. I think the, the one that you're probably most interested in is the text tab and you can see like that you can, you know, kind of scroll through it and just in this embedded in here, or we can look at it in PDF and doesn't want, it's thinking about it. It's a big bill. <laughs> um, so the bill itself, it's like 880 pages long and it has a ton of, mm, let's try it again. See if we can. All right, we'll skip the PDF. You can trust me that it's 800 pages long. You can see in this HTML version that they do link from the table of contents to, um, to the sections of the bill. Um, and we can see like, for example, um, like promoting internet re voter registration. I don't think this is going, this is not letting me work and do it, but. Oh, 
I'll try one last time. But anyway, this bill, you know, so you can go through and read the text of this bill. I'll just, I'll just scroll. <laughs> um, and you can see, let's go to the, I'm trying to get to the beginning of a section here, but it's not. Um, okay, so here you can see that they are saying that we are, it's amending this existing law and it's inserting a brand new section. So this is new, um, this is new language that they're adding. Um, sometimes they, they just change existing language or they delete something. In this case, they're adding, um, they're adding language. And so you can just go ahead and read this. This is all new, uh, new legislative text that you can see what, what they're proposing to do. Um, another option is you might not have the bill number and, but you know that it, what something is called. And so I want to get more information on the CARES Act. And I know that it, I know that this was signed into law and I look to see like, it's not at the top, which is kind of where I expect it to be. And I just scrolling through and I can see that all of these bills have just been introduced. Like there's nothing that says it became law. Well, that's because I made the mistake that I talked about earlier, which is I didn't change the session this past last year. So um, it's always worth, if you don't find what you expect to find, it is um, worth making sure that you are searching the right, ses the right session of Congress. Okay, so again, I'm kind of looking for um, something that was signed into law, kind of expected it to be higher up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, let's see, it's showing me a lot of things from the, the current session. And so I'm gonna go over here and uncheck this. You can see there's, they show you the last two sessions. So I'm gonna uncheck the current one because I'm not interested in things that are going to amend the existing one. I'm looking for the one that passed. Um, Okay, so this is, here's one that became law, but that's not the right bill. Um, and I'm still looking. And so this is where you have to be kind of a detective. Like all I know is that it's called the CARES Act. I don't know anything else. I don't know the bill number. I still haven't found it. So this is where I just start Googling things like CARES Act, bill number. Let's see if this helps me. Okay, look how, look how easy that was. So HR 748, so now should have done that first. HR 748, it's in all Congresses. Um, okay, so here, this is not the right Congress again. So we'll uncheck the, like I said, the bill numbers restart. So CARES Act became law. Here it is. This is why I say you have to be a detective because sometimes it takes a little poking around to find the information you need to find the bill you're looking for. And again, this is another huge bill, so I'm not going to go to the text, um, but you can see that like this is this is um, uh, this is just the summary <laughs> how long this is of all the different provisions in this COVID relief bill. So um, and the third thing is like you don't even know the bill title. You just know that you know you heard a story on the news that they are thinking about a bill that would include sesame on food labels as a potential allergen. And that's all you know. You don't know the sponsor, you don't know the bill number, you don't know the title. Um, so I'm just gonna try looking for sesame and hope that you know this isn't all that common. <laughs> and it's not. So you can see that I found this one pretty quickly. Um, this is the called the FASTER Act of 2021. You can see that it has passed the Senate. And this is a <laughs> much smaller bill, so we'll be able to, to see the text. But again, here's a summary that saying that it expands the definition of major food allergen for food labeling purposes to include sesame. Um, and we can look at the text. And so you can see that it, this is, um, unlike the voting rights bill that we saw, this one is amending current legislation and you can see that they say that they, they're amending this section and they're striking <laughs> the end of the current list 
that ends with and soybeans and changing it to be soybeans and sesame. Um, and you can see that they have the date when this would go into effect um, in this bill. So you can see that they're, you know, depending on um, how much information you have, it can be easier or harder um, to find a bill. Um, what's nice is that it does link to, you know, this doesn't really tell you much about what this does. It just, from what you can tell from this is that it's adding it to some sort of list. And you can click directly through and see, um, this is taking you to the US code, which we're gonna talk about in a second, but this is the existing law. And it was 321QQ. We'll just try to get to QQ. Um, and so you can see that this is where it's being added. It's being added to this list here after soybeans. But this still doesn't really tell you what it would do. So from here, you know, I'd be, there's be, you know, a couple things that you're looking at here to try to figure out. You need more information about what this bill does. And this is where you, again, need to be a little bit of a detective. Um, you know, we, we went through, we saw the bill summary. We know that it's being added to the list of major food allergens. Uh, the other things you can check to see is this, was there a committee hearing? Like did they, were there people testifying about what this bill would do? Uh, did anyone give a speech about it on the floor? That's where they talk about what this bill would do. Um, are there any press releases? You know, usually if a bill is introduced, um, your congressman wants you to know about it. So we can look for that. Um, also looking for news articles about the bill and also looking for, you know, press releases from groups who are for and against the bill. Like these are the stakeholders that I was talking about earlier. And so just a couple of things we can try. We know that it was called um, the FASTER Act and that it was um, introduced by Tim Scott. And so here we've got a press release about the bill where they talk about in kind of language you understand, <laughs> telling you what this bill does and why they're introducing it. Um, and so here's, you know, kind of just some more information from the sponsors. Um, so here is something from one of the stakeholders. This is some of the food allergy research and education group and um, this is one of their priorities is passing this law. So you can, you can see that they'll, you know, talk about what, what this bill does in more detail. Um, and, you know, you can just kind of go through and see some different, um, different, like here's an article from the uh, South Carolina newspaper about the bill. Um, and so just lots of ways you can, use Google to try to find more information um, about this bill, because a lot of times you just don't get enough from the bill text to really have a clear understanding of all the ins and outs of what, you know, just adding that, adding sesame to that list, so like what it, what it does. Okay. And so, um, we've looked into how to look for federal legislation on congress.gov. And now um, it's kind of interesting about trying to find, if you're looking for laws, like you want to find the law uh, something that was already passed, or you want to find, um, you know, how it's been kind of codified into current law. And so after a bill is signed into law, um, it's given what's called a public law number, and I can show you where those are on congress.gov. So you can very easily look through the list of all the bills that became laws um, in a session of Congress. Um, but in addition, it's also incorporated into the US code, um, which is organized by subject. And when I mean, when I say incorporated, what I mean is they, you know, if, if the bill, delete, you know, strikes something from existing law, it gets deleted from the code. If it adds a new section, they add that. If it makes edits, it adds those edits. Um, and you can search the US code from lots of different sites, including congress.gov 
um, some other public sites, subscription databases. Um, basically, Googling US code will, will bring you lots of options. And I'm going to show you, let's go back to go back to congress.gov. I wanted to show you where you can find the list of public laws. Um, you can see it's right here in the top right for public laws. And it's defaulting to the current Congress. You can see they've, they've only passed six bills so far this year. <laughs> um, but if you were looking for the big you know, COVID relief bill, um, it would be right here. Uh, you know, just things you know that have already been signed. And here's the public law number um, on this side. But if you're looking for, you know, if you want to see, so what this looks like is this looks like what we saw in the, um, in when we looked at the legislation, it looks, it's, it looks just like what we saw before. If you want to see how it's incorporated into the code, you need to go into the US code. And this is where we were looking before for, um, for the major food allergen. And so I'm just going to show you from the main page here. Uh, this is the, the page from the House, um, from the US House's uh, website, um, uscode.house.gov. And you can see it is um, broken down into subject areas. And we were looking in Title 21, which was food and drugs. And we were also, because we had that. We had that number. Um, it said it, it was 21 USC 321 is what it was. And so you can see that you can see here it shows you what sections and we were looking for 321. So here is how you would get to if you know the statute um, that three US it's because it, it's written like 21 USC, which stands for US code. And then it was 321. Um, and then it was that QQ <laughs> in the definitions, right? So um, if we wanna see this whole section, you can see it all in one place. So this is the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act. So this would include, you know, this was created when this act was first passed and every time it's been amended uh, or added to, it gets updated on this page. And so if you wanted to do some more, um, researching about, oh, it was major food allergen, I think. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, you can, you know, you can start to see, here are the labeling requirements that sesame would get added to. So this actually tells you what would, what would change um, if sesame was added to that law. Um, you can also search the US code. Um, for example, if we wanted just to search for major food allergen, it would show you all the places in the code where that phrase appears. And not surprisingly, it's really only in um, that food and drug section we were just looking at. Um, but you can do a keyword search in the code. The more specific you are, the, easy, the more likely it will be that you'll find, um, you'll find what you're looking for. And then in addition to codes, in addition to laws, um, you might also be looking for federal regulations. And regulations are essentially rules made by executive agencies and departments um, to implement the laws passed by Congress. So Congress will say, <laughs> we require, um, you know, we're gonna have some food labeling requirements and this is what they need to do. And then the regulations will go through and actually put all the details in about like what it will look like and who's required to do it. Um, this is actually where most of the meat um, of a legislative of a law can be found. And how this works is the agency will issue a proposed rule like this is what we're proposing to do on this topic and it allows for public comment. And this can be done by companies or organizations or individual people can submit a comment on a proposed rule um, that they theoretically take into account. Um, and then after the public comment period is over, they then issue a final rule. Um, that's the final version of the regulation that has the force of law. Um, 
And so there are two major ways that you can look for regulations. Um, the first one is by searching the Federal Register at federalregister.gov. And this is a daily publication where they publish rules and proposed rules and a notice that a rule is coming. Um, so you can look in there. And then the other place is the actual code of federal regulations where they, all the regulations live, the complete list. So we can just, we're just gonna quickly look at how you can do that. So I was going to, um, uh, I was looking for some um, regulations that were pending and were in the news. Um, and one of them that is in the news right now is that um, uh, actually that Trump, um, President Trump uh, changed the regulations related to family planning under title, family planning funds under Title IX, uh, Title X, I'm sorry, Title X is how it is um, a lot of times referred to. And, you know, to make it so that any um, family planning organization that received federal funding could not even um, mention abortion or make any referrals to uh, organizations that perform abortions. Um, and so it, um, if you look in the federal register, you know, cause I don't have, you know, I, I mean, you wouldn't have a clue, like you don't have a number to look for this. And so I'm gonna try to find it in this, in the federal register. And so you can see I'm searching for title 10 and family planning. And it has 139 different documents. You can see that there's like some public comment requests. Like here's one, you know, asking for their 60 days of public comment. I'm actually looking for, you can see over here that you can limit to rules or proposed rules. So I'm just gonna limit it to a rule. Like this is the actual final rule. Um, and you can see that this is the, this is the, the rule right here. Um, that was, you can see it's listed as a final rule. And there's a summary of what this does, effective dates. And here is the text of the, the new regulation about what, what this does, what it changes. And so the best thing to get from this federal register um, is you're looking for this CFR, which is the Code of Federal Regulations, like this number, this is the equivalent of a bill number. And so if you were to look for the code, I just, I don't, we'll just code federal regulations. If you have that number, it will take you, um, you can get directly to, let's see. Oh, that was not how I wanted to do that. Let's see. Uh, oh, enter a title number. So let's see if that. All right, more. Let's try. Let's just try this. <laughs> um, you can see here we go. So here is. Um, so here is the total register. The total regulation for. Um, Family planning services, and that was amended by the regulation that Trump's administration did. And there has been notice from the Biden administration that they're going to revise this regulation back to what it was under Obama. <laughs> so if you wanted to comment on that, you would wait for it to appear um, in the Federal Register. It has not happened yet, but it would be listed as a proposed rule. Before we sort it by rule, we would just look for a proposed rule. So, you know, what will happen is that it will, um, there'll be a request for comment and there'll be like a 60 day period or a 90 day period where people or groups or companies can um, send in their comments on the proposed regulation. 
So I know this is <laughs> I know this is a lot of information and kind of confusing, um, but like I said, if you can be a bit of a detective, you can um, look around these sites and find the either the the bill or the statute, um, which is the law or the regulation. And then I wanted to talk quickly about how to find state legislation. Um, people focus so much on state, um, on, on Congress that they don't often realize that a lot of the bills that affect your daily life, um, the most are actually passed um, in state legislatures. And um, so let's get, let me get back to, And so just from the beginning, I want you to know that the state legislatures across the country vary greatly. Um, nine of them are full-time. These are states like California, Michigan, Wisconsin, New York. Um, they, they meet all year. They have very large professional staffs um, who work full-time um, for the legislature. Um, but the vast majority of state legislatures are part-time, like Kentucky, and they have much smaller professional staffs. Um, Four state legislatures, including Texas, surprisingly, only meet every other year <laughs> in odd years. Um, some states do the budget in one year and do other legislation the second year. Um, some states have a new session every year, it starts over every year. Others are more like the US House where they have two year sessions. Um, and so just like the state legislatures vary, the state legislative websites vary, vary a lot. <laughs> um, they all have a website, but each state provides different amounts of information and makes it easier or harder to find bills if you don't have the bill number. I mean, they all, it's all, it's all easy if you have the bill number. Um, but in most cases, you don't have it. Um, I will say that Kentucky makes it very, very hard to find a bill if you don't have the bill number. And I'm just going to show you because it will kind of boggle your mind about how hard they make this. So we're just going to look for the Kentucky legislature. And then we're going to go to bills. And you're like, okay, I want to find a bill. It's right there. Find a bill. Okay, you, <laughs> the only thing you can search for once you change it to 2021, is the bill number. You don't have the bill number, so you gotta go back. And let's see, like how else can I search? So I'm gonna go click on the 2021 session. Um, there's all this information, but I don't see anywhere where I can search for a keyword. Like for example, I heard on the radio that Kentucky um, passed a law this session that caps the copay for insulin at $30. And so I want, I want to see the text of that bill. <laughs> well, there's nowhere here that lets you search for the word insulin, right? So I'm like, okay, I know that it became law. So let me click on the law button. Well, this does not help me at all. I'm not going to click on all of these links to find the bill that I need. You can see why I say that Kentucky makes this very hard. So this is where you have to Kentucky legislature insulin cap. Let's see if I can find something with a bill number. And here's one right here. So HB 95. Thank you to this local news that included the bill number because they don't always do that. So now I know that this is HB 95. I can click on it from here. And now I can find the, you know, the information they have on this bill, which includes the, the text. Um, and there's, you can see there's not really like a lot of other information. Like there's not, um, you don't see a good summary here. This says the summary of the original version. Uh, that makes me nervous because that means if it was amended, you don't know what the summary is. Um, there are some fiscal statements that talk about like how much this bill will cost the state. Um, but I just, I don't have a lot of information here. So this is where, you know, you'd want to search for news articles or other things to try to find additional information. Um, I just want to compare this to a state that is also considering 
an insulin cap. Um, we're going to look at Michigan. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't have the bill number, but it lets me search for a keyword. And look at this. So here is health limit amount of copay for insulin. So here is the bill. And you can see that they um, have a bill analysis here that was actually updated after it passed out of committee. And so you can see um, they give you some good plain English summary about what this bill does. And um, you can see like who, who supported the bill. Like this is really helpful to know that it was supported by the AARP, um, the Michigan League for Public Policy. It was opposed by the Association of Health Plans um, and also these other <laughs> health plans who don't want the copay to be limited. Um, but if I wanted to find more information about this bill, in addition to the news searching for news, I could also look, go to the websites of any of these groups and see if they had information about why they either supported or opposed the bill. Um, and like I said, the, you know, this Kentucky page was so hard to search, um, so hard to find based on a keyword. I just want to show you that there are other alternatives um, to searching um, just each individual state legislative page, because sometimes you might be trying to figure out like how many states have passed laws about insulin caps and you want to search them all at one time. And so one of the sites is called openstates.org. And when you're here, um, you can um, either search like all of the states or you can just search one state. So I just want to show you how much easier it would be to search for Kentucky bills. Um, so it's now I've switched to just searching Kentucky and then here is where I can do a search for insulin. Um, and it has some from last year, but you can see like here is um, that HR 95 should, should be in here. Uh, I think I might need to, let's try insulin copay. Let's see if that, there it is right here on top um, related to prescription uh, insulin. And it gives you the same kind of information that was in um, in the Kentucky page, but in a better format. They just they kind of take all the information from the Kentucky legislative website and put it in a nicer format. You can see here like the steps. You can see the latest bill text. Here they've got all the sponsors, um, the the detail of you know how it passed. Um, so yeah, so you know, open states, like if I was doing keyword searching for Kentucky bills, I would absolutely start here instead of searching on the Kentucky website. Um, another one that um, is handy is called Legiscan. It's very similar. You can search individual states or um, you can search just by, you can search one state or you can search all states. So if you search all states for insulin and copay, you know, it's bringing back 86 results. That's kind of manageable enough to look through to see if some of these are about the copays or that they, uh, but you can see just from looking at this, like, yeah, these are, <laughs> these are copay bills and you can see where they are um, in, the, in the process. And so it's just another way, especially if you're looking across multiple states, um, rather than searching each individual one, this is a, a free resource um, for that. And one other, two other things just really quickly about if you're looking for topics that are really um, in the news uh, for state legislatures, um, a great site is Stateline. And this, um, this is a news site that focuses on, on at the state level. And so it links, it has original reporting and also links to state news um, covering things. And so sometimes you can go by topics um, you know, if you were interested in healthcare, you can just see all of the articles that they have written about healthcare. Um, because this is focused at the state level, you get a lot of the 
newspaper articles from state capitals that are still covering uh, state legislatures. And the other one is a place I used to work, the National Conference of State Legislatures. And they have a research section with bill tracking and they have 50 state databases on a bunch of different topics. Um, so for example, if we, let's look for, um, maybe for, okay, so here's maternal and child health. And you can see that they have um, a database with different variables that you can look for. And so we could do newborn screening, all states, uh, we want just stuff that was enacted and we can search. Um, I just searched for 2021, so it might not be a very long list, but if there are so four bills so far have passed this year on this topic. So again, just another way to search across multiple states if you are, if that is, um, if that's your goal. And so, um, And so again, you know, what kind of information you're gonna get from a legislative website is gonna vary. And so you, you have to use a lot of the same strategies you used for more information from federal bills. And so that's doing, you know, Google searches or Google news searches for the bill title, the number, the sponsor, you're looking for press releases um, or a speech from the sponsor about what the bill does. Uh, you know, you can often find a press release from an organization that either supports or opposes the bill. And so once again, I encourage you to think about who are the stakeholders and who really cares about that issue, um, because they're going to be the people who are talking about it. And finally, I'm not going to get into this because it's not that different from looking for federal statutes and federal regulations, but you can go to each individual state code, which is usually linked from the legislative website, or you can go to this great site um, from Cornell that has links, has a page for each state that has direct links to um, the state codes, which are the existing laws, and also to the regulations that are in effect, which in states are often called administrative codes. So don't be alarmed by that, that term. Those are just the, the lists of the, of, of the regulations. And so that was a lot. <laughs> um, it's, it's complicated to find legislation, um, especially when you don't have bill numbers. And so you need strategies to find the bill numbers when you don't have them. Um, but when you, if you can find it, you can usually uh, have some strategies to find the bill in the legislative websites and then also look for additional information. So that's what I've got today. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Or if you want to contact me directly, uh, you can do that. If you need help doing a legislative search or looking for laws or regulations, I'm happy to help you with that.